My name is Becky and welcome to our Russell's Loving Life YouTube channel. Here on this channel, we talk about homeschooling, homemaking, and everything in between. I am a homeschooling mom of two and I have been homeschooling since 2012. We also have a blog, which is russellslovinglife.com. Make sure to check that out. There, I give you tips and tricks and things that I have learned through my years of homeschooling. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that little bell notification down at the bottom. That just lets you know every time we upload a new video. And if you are a returning Russell fam, we are so glad you are back. Russell fam, it is time to dump in all of our ingredients. First, we are going to dump in, I've already chopped up a small onion and two cloves of garlic, so we're going to dump those in there. We're going to dump in one pound of country pleasing smoked sausage that I cubed like this. And I'm trying not to make a mess. use the small beans. You can use whichever you prefer, the dark or the light. I prefer the dark. We dump them in there. And then our secret ingredient that we use is 48 ounces of chicken broth. You just pour it in there. All right, that was 32 ounces. Now we're going to top it off. All right. Now we're going to give it a quick stir. And I'm going to move it around and show, move the camera around and show you how we get everything set up. Be back in just a second. All right. So we have, we're going to put our lid on. Remember, we put our lid on. And then we come over here. Let me see if I can maneuver to show you how it goes. We have it lined up and there's our pin back here. And we turn it and make sure it locks. And we come over here and we look for our, our release and our seal and we wanna make sure it is on seal. Then I turn the pot back around. And then I come down here and we are gonna do some slow cooking. We're going to slow cook it for four hours. It'll blink for three seconds. If you need long, uh, shorter or longer, you can change it, but we're going to do it for four, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, Russell fam, the timer just went off, and it is BB right here, and so that means that it's going to keep it warm, so I'm just going to hit the cancel button down here to make it go to all zeros. All right, we're going to relieve the pressure, so I always have a paper towel because sometimes... Hot liquid squirts up from there, so we're going to press it. So now I am going to twist the lid, and I always have the lid facing me. So any hot steam that comes up will go up, and the top will deflect it. So it goes like that, and you see all the hot steam coming up. And stirring it around. The camera's fogging up a little bit, so I'm trying to do it at an angle. But you see, the beans are done. All the chicken broth that we put in there, they're still a little. I like mine a little soupy, just because I mix it with the rice. So that is what it looks like. I'm going to plate it up and let you see what the uh, end result looks like and what it tastes like. And I'll be back in just a second. All right, here is my bowl. It has some rice in it. I'm fixing to scoop out some of the red beans and sausage and put them in the bowl. All right, 
try not to steam up the camera, but I wanted to grab a bean to show you how soft they are. Did you see how the fork went straight through it? And I put dried beans in there, and it cooked for four hours in the Fistler multipot. Mmm. It tastes really, really good. Try a bite of sausage. Mmm. That is hot, but so good. For today's recipe, you are going to need two chicken breasts. And because I'm using my Fistler Multipot, I always put frozen chicken breasts in here. It just makes my life so much easier. So you start with two chicken breasts. You are going to need one medium onion chopped. Get all out of there. All right, and then you are going to need one can of white beans. You're going to need one can of black beans. And I go ahead and drain and rinse them. So I've already done that. So they're gonna go in here. You are also going to need corn. I like to use frozen corn, but you can use canned corn if that's what you like. We're gonna pour that in there. You are also going to need one can of Rotel tomatoes. Do not drain it. You are going to need one cup of chicken broth. You are going to need one ranch packet. It's ranch dressing, ranch mix. It's just dried powdered ranch seasoning. I know they all say different things, so you pick whatever you use, but it needs to be the dry ranch powder. All right, and for your seasonings, you are going to need salt and pepper to taste. I have a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper. You are going to need one tablespoon of chili powder and one teaspoon of cumin. I will leave all of the ingredients and the amounts down in the description box just to help you out. And now you are going to need one pack of cream cheese, which is eight ounces cubed and just pour it over in here. And the juice from your chicken breast, the juice from your um, chicken broth and the juice uh, and the juice from your chicken, your chicken broth, I can't talk. And the juice from your Rotel tomatoes all in here is going to make it creamy. It's not gonna make it really soupy. It is gonna be like a real kind of chilly thing. So I just kind of mix things around a little bit just to make sure that seasoning kind of gets everywhere. Oop. There you go. All right, so now I'm going to put the top on this. All right, and like I said, I have my frozen chicken breast in here. This is my Fistler Multipot. I will leave videos up here as well as a link down in the description so you can get you a Fistler Multipot if you wanna check it out. I love it, it's a pressure cooker, or you can use it as a slow cooker. I will also leave a video on how everything works, but I'm going to put it on slow cook. And the reason I have to hit it twice is one, to make it come on, and two, to make it go. And so now this is going to cook under pressure for four hours, and we'll be back when it's done.
this recipe, you are going to need two 12 ounce bags of frozen sweet corn. You are going to need a third of a block of cream cheese, a third of a stick of butter. You are going to need four slices of bacon chopped. You are going to need two jalapenos diced and you are going to need a third of a cup of heavy whipping cream. You can use milk if you want to, but this is what I use and it makes it taste so much better. And you are going to need one cup of shredded cheese, but you need that at the end. So let's get all of this in the Fistler. All right, and you're also going to need one teaspoon of sugar that we're going to put in. You're going to salt and pepper to taste. That's a lot of corn, so there we go with the pepper. And you got to add in your salt. I'm using about a teaspoon, but you put in what your family wants. There's the salt. Then we are going to put in the third a cup of milk right here. And then we are going to put in the butter. And I have cubed it all here, just like the cream cheese. I'm just going to put it in. I'll add all of the bacon that you've already cut. And then here is the jalapeno. We're going to mix it around. And we are going to cook it in the Fistler on slow for two hours. The timer just went off. Let's see how it looks. Yummy. Oh, it's fogging up the camera. Let's stir it around. Delicious. Now we're going to add our cup of shredded cheese and just mix it around and it will melt. Look how yummy it is. I have already browned and drained one pound of ground beef. I have two potatoes peeled and cut. You can use canned vegetables if you want to. I just like to use the frozen vegetables. So I've got the cooked vegetables right here. And they are in the bag, mixed vegetables. I just use one bag of those. And then I add an extra bag of sweet corn that, like I said, you can use um, if you want the cans or you can add two cans of uh, mixed vegetables and no more corn. So we're going to put that in there and you're going to put in one can of stewed tomatoes. We had our own, so I put that in there. And then you're going to need two cans of tomato sauce but I make my tomato sauce here with our tomatoes that we grow and put up. So that's why it looks a little different in there. And then you're going to add one cup of beef broth. Just add it in there. And then you add salt and pepper to taste. I usually use about a tablespoon to a big batch like this because I believe that you can always add more salt to it. You cannot take the salt out. So that's probably about a teaspoon of pepper. But there again, salt and pepper to the way your family likes it. And then I'm just gonna mix it all around.
and you can um, I typically use um, stewed beef um, but you can add deer tenderloin in here is good ground beef is good it is up to you whatever you want to do I have not tried chicken in here yet that might be an option if you like chicken so we've got it good and stirred we're gonna put our top on it make sure it is set to seal and we move the camera down where you can see all right here's all the functions that are offered there is a meat and stew and then a soup and a broth feature I don't use those I typically just use the slow cooker option that has just been one that I have always used it goes for four hours leave me a comment below if you use the different settings now I have done rice I have done beans and I have done oatmeal and I have not tried eggs I've got to do that one because we love some uh, boiled eggs so we're gonna let it go for four hours and I'll be back to show you what it looks like y'all I don't know where my brain is today but obviously it's not here I had to add three cups of water to go along with the cup of beef broth so I could make it soup instead of soup stew so make sure to add your three cups of water. Got one small onion chopped, two cloves of garlic chopped, one small bell pepper chopped. We have two cans of dark red kidney beans. We have a can of tomato paste. We have a jar of homemade stewed tomatoes and we have chili powder and so and we have a pound of ground beef browned and drained that I did in the Fistler I went ahead and drained it so what we're going to do now is we are going to saute our onions bell pepper and garlic I'm gonna get those over in the pot and we're back in just a second all right I have put the vegetables in the Fistler pot I'm fixing to add a little bit of olive oil in there and then we are going to saute some vegetables I hit the saute button right here and it is heating up so we are going to add some olive oil just about a teaspoon in there just enough to coat everything because I drained the grease so there wasn't much left from the ground beef so we're just going to saute these around get them good and tender and then I will be back when I add the hamburger meat in all right, the vegetables have sauteed, so now I'm fixing to add in my browned and drained hamburger meat. And then I'm going to stir that around. And then I'm going to show you how I make my homemade tomato sauce that I put in our chili. So we got that good and stirred. So now I have taken my quart of stewed tomatoes. Let me get the camera set up. All right, if you see, I've got my quart of tomatoes. What I did is I took my slotted spoon right here and I scooped out some tomatoes and I put them in here. And then I added some of the juice along with it. And now I am going to take the tomato paste and I'm going to add it in here and mix it up and when I get done with that I'll be back in just a second all right I have mixed up my homemade tomato sauce and you see how it is like this so now I am going to pour this in with the meat and the vegetables that we sauteed but first I'm going to take the rest of this I am going to strain it to, so I can get the tomatoes to add the stewed tomatoes without all the extra juice into the meat. I will be back in just a second after I drain it. All right, I have drained the tomatoes and this is what is left, our little bit of stewed tomatoes. So I like to have a little bit of tomatoes in with my chili, so those are in there. And then we are gonna pour in our homemade tomato sauce that we made. Then we're going to mix all of that around. Let me do it with my 
spoon, it might work a little better. There we go. Mix it all around. See how we're getting it good and mixed. All right, so we have that mixed now. And we are going to take our two cans of kidney beans and we're going to drain those and then pour them in there. All right, here are our two cans of beans that have been drained and rinsed. And they are going in here. And we're going to mix those all around. This is one of my go-to fall favorites that I like to use a lot when the weather is cold. Comment below what some of your fall favorites are, what are your go-to meals when it's cold outside. All right, and then we are going to add two tablespoons of chili powder. Some people add more, some people add less. I like to start with two tablespoons and go from there. All right, there we go. There's our two tablespoons that I sprinkled all over. And now we are going to mix all that up. All right, we got it mixed. We are going to cl click on slow cooking. So we're gonna slow cook it. We're gonna slow cook it for four hours. And there you go. And when it is done, I will be back to show you what the finished product looks like. All right, the Fissler just went off. Time is up. We are going to relieve the pressure and take the top off and see what we have in here. And you see all the goodness in the chili. Stir it up. And you can see all the yummy goodness I'm fixing to put it in a bowl with some cheese and sour cream and taste it and I'll let you know. All right, I have put my cheddar cheese, I have put my sour cream on it. Now I'm fixing to get a bite of all the yummy goodness. It is hot and smoking, so I'm gonna blow it. Mm, that is so good. All the flavors have melted together. Oh, you have got to try this recipe. This recipe, I'll leave it in the description below, but you're gonna need one pound of ground beef that we're fixing to brown and drain in our Fistler Multipot. You are going to need 16 ounces of cream cheese cubed. You are going to need 16 ounces of sharp cheese shredded and you're going to need two cans of diced tomatoes with peppers okay so we're going to brown the meat and be back in just a second Burger meat has been browned and I did that by using the saute function right here. So I have browned the hamburger meat. I have drained it and put it back in the fissler. Now we're going to pour in our tomatoes, juice and all, and that's two cans. And now we're going to turn it back on saute and we're going to get everything nice and warm again. And we're going to stir it all together. And 
and you want everything to get back up to the warm temperature because you're fixing to add your cream cheese and your cheese to the mixture. So we're going to let it get just a second and once it gets all um, back up to heat and temperature I'll be back to show you how I add the cheese. All right, we have it back up to a simmer. So now I'm gonna give it a quick stir. And then we are going to add in our cheese. This is, again, 16 ounces of shredded cheese. And I'm going to put my Fistler on the keep warm function. And you do that by just hitting the cancel button twice. Just pour that right there, and now we're going to put in our cream cheese. You still hear it simmering a little bit, so it is hot. So now we want to stir it, just because it is still hot down at the bottom. So just stir it all around. Alright, so everything has quit simmering, it's cooled down, we have it stirred. So now I'm going to put my top on it, and I'm going to let it sit here for about five minutes until everything gets good and melted, and I'll be back to show you what it looks like. It has been about five minutes, so we're going to take off our top. Oh, that looks good. And we're going to stir it around. There's still a few little chunks of cream cheese in there, so let's just mash those around. Look how yummy. Oh. Okay. I gotta try this. And since I'm on keto, I have my pork rinds right here that I'm gonna use to dip. Oh, it smells so good. Yummy. Now let's try it. I'm going to make sure I turn off my keep warm on my Fistler. And I'm going to put the top back on this for just a minute. Scoot it over there and let's try a bite. Mmm. That is so good. Alright, for this recipe you will need one pound of ground beef that I am browning and going to drain in here. You are going to need two cans of stewed tomatoes or we use our homegrown. You need one pack of your favorite taco seasoning. You need one pack of ranch seasoning. You need one can of beef broth, the 14 ounces. You need one can of Rotel tomatoes. It calls for pinto beans, but I like to use the chili, uh, Bush's chili beans. It has a mild sauce with it that adds a little extra to it. You need one can of corn. And you need a can of black beans. And you need a can of kidney beans and you are going to drain the corn. You are going to rinse and drain your black beans and your kidney beans and I'm going to get all that done and we'll be back in just a second. Alright, I have browned and drained one pound of ground beef. I have drained and rinsed the I drained the corn and rinsed the kidney beans and the black beans are buried under the corn. Now we're going to add in our pinto or chili beans that I like to use. Then we're going to add the whole can of, roll, of uh, Rotel tomatoes including the juice. You don't drain those. You add in one can 
of beef broth. You add in two cans of stewed tomatoes. You add in your taco seasoning. You add in your ranch seasoning. Then you mix it all together. I like to make sure the seasoning gets all covered in there so it's not just floating on the top. going to put our top on and then we would have put it on slow cooking slow cooking for four hours and it'll be a blink for three seconds then it will turn to that and start counting down and when four hours is up I'll be back to show you what it looks like open it up and we're gonna stir it around Oh, and it smells so good. It's been smelling good since it's been cooking. All right, you've got taco soup right here. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I will be more than happy to answer any question I can. As always, remember to be kind, be careful, be considerate, and have a great day. Bye.